Wouldn't it be convenient to see important internet data like the weather, your YouTube views and subscribers or the amount of Twitter followers outside of a screen? So in this video, I will show you how a combined big 4 inch 7 segment displays with the always popular ESP8266 Wi-Fi module to create a stackable 8 digits display which can present your most important data from the internet in a good looking old fashioned style. Let's get started. First off, let's have a closer look at the 7 segment displays. Like the name already suggests, those consist of 7 segments with 4 red LEDs in series inside, which can be labeled from A to G. Plus you get a decimal point with two LEDs inside. These letters correlate with the 10 pins of the display, while pin 1 and 8 are the common anodes aka the plus terminal. The given information from the seller claims that the letters require 9 volts and the decimal point around 5 volts, which is complete bullshit, because this way they draw way too much current which would lead to an early death. Around 7 volts for the letters and 3.7 volts for the decimal point is appropriate, with a current flow of around 20 milliamps. To control them individually, I went with the TLC5940 constant current driver, because it offers 16 outputs which is perfect to control two digits at once and the existing library for the Arduino is very easy to understand and control. In order to test this though, I firstly needed to build a prototype. So I inserted the pins of two displays into female headers, positioned them on two perf boards and soldered them in place. Luckily, the width of the board is exactly the same as the display and the length can easily be shortened with a saw later on to create a fitting size for the final product. To make the perf board stackable, I used 8 pin female and male headers on one side to distribute 9 volts to the display and 5 volts ground and all the necessary data connections to the TLC. On the other side, I used 16 pin male and female headers to forward the same power and data signals to the next TLC and also to hook up the 8 pins of the second display to the output pins 8 to 15 of the TLC. I did the rest wiring according to the instructions given in the TLC basic U sketch and finally hooked up my Arduino and 9 volt power to the 8 pin input. Now if we want to light up certain patterns of segments to create a digit, then the easiest way would be to use so called arrays. In my case I have pin 2 hooked up to TLC pin 0, 3 to 1, 4 to 2 and so on. As an example, I want to create the number 0, so I have to turn on TLC pin 0, 1, 2, not 3, 4, 5, 6 and not 7. By repeating this procedure with all numbers, I can store them in a two-dimensional array and set the TLC channels accordingly with a simple for loop. But that only works for the first digit though. In order to light up the second or both, I just need to add an 8 where it defines which output gets turned on. That's basically the whole magic to control these. And since everything worked fine, I started thinking about adding a standalone Atmega 328P with complementary parts including a 5V regulator, the Wi-Fi module with a 3.3V regulator and the voltage divider so that it can receive the signals from the 5V microcontroller without getting destroyed and a couple more necessary parts. You might notice that all of those components on one perf board would result in a messy layout and especially a chaotic wiring. Needless to say, I would also have to build 4 of those TLC boards, which would take a lot of time. So I tried something new and different for this project. Firstly I made sure that I used existing parts in my schematic that I would have laying around and afterwards I started to create a board layout in Eagle. I'm not a PCB design expert, but it was basically just an act of arranging the parts in a pleasant layout and then connecting them with the routing tool while making sure that no traces with different signals touch each other on the same side. 
After I was finished with it, I exported the Gerber files, which I sent to a professional PCB manufacturer. In this case, it was PCB Card, who also sponsored this video. While the price for my 5 PCBs was not that low, you can save 15% up to $200 off on your first order by using the coupon code PCBGSL. Link to them is in the description. Once I received the PCBs, I had a closer look at them, did some continuity testing and decided that they should work without a problem. So I gathered all the components and started to solder them in their place. But I made one big mistake, which I will tell you about in the next part. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Check out PCB Card if you're interested in your own professional PCBs. Stay creative and I will see you next time.